Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Go ahead. Good you evening, Mayor and, and Council. I'd like to present to you Jane Bice de Sessa. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. If you could introduce yourself and give us a, a, a little uh, introducing and back touching yourself, and then we'll start with questions. Okay, very good. We know I have a tendency to ramble, so I'm going to, I wrote something up, and I'm going to try to stick to that so that you can get a, a good idea in terms of, of myself. Again, uh, good afternoon or good evening, uh, City Council Mayor and City Council. My name is Jane Bice de Sessa. You know, one of the great things uh, in terms of, of my career is that I've been able to do this the majority of, of my career. My entire career has been de dedicated uh, to working uh, with local government. Um, I have served in uh, nine communities. I'm proud to say that I've worked for the cities or the states of Texas, Michigan, and Colorado. I've worked <coughs> for a total of nine cities, and I've held the position of city village manager and deputy mayor for five of these uh, of these communities. I've worked with both large and small cities. And the one thing that I'd like to say to you all that I think I, I have is that I've I've worked in all areas associated with the provision of local government. Um, the last city that I worked in um, was uh, the city of Lansing. That is a strong mayor form of government. So uh, most of the appointees are uh, one-year employees, and uh, we serve at the pleasure of the mayor. Um, I'm a native Texan. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science and a Master of Science degree in public institutional administration from St. Mary's University in San Antonio, Texas. Now, originally, uh, my intent was to become a, an attorney. That was all I ever dreamed of being. Uh, I wanted to be uh, a lawyer because in my family, uh, we saw attorneys as individuals that would help those whenever we got in trouble. And we got in trouble a lot, apparently. <laughs> So I figured, <laughs> hey, uh, but then when I got there, St. Mary's University in, um, in Southwest Texas is, is a law school primarily. Now it's changed. It's become more of a business uh, um, uh, university. But, uh, but still, in Southwest Texas, anyone, everyone uh, considers St. Mary's as, as, as one of the uh, best law schools to attend. Uh, I'm very active in international, state, and local uh, professional organizations. And the two that I'm most proud of is the International City and County Managers Association, where I served as the Midwest uh, Vice President in 2003-2006, and also the uh, Local Government Hispanic <coughs> Network. And uh, that's, again, that's a national organization. And I had the privilege of serving as president for two terms, uh, one 2008 to 2011. And then the last thing that I want to let you know about myself is I, I, these past few years, I have received some recognitions. And, and normally I don't, you know, I don't talk about these things, but these two, uh, I, they're really near and dear to my heart, so I'd, I'd, li I'd like to share them. The, the first was in 2019, where I received the Civic uh, Leadership Award from the El Centro Multicultural La Familia. That is a nonprofit organization in, uh, in Pontiac. And, uh, that uh, award was given to um, to me because of my work in helping others understand how local government works and helping them to uh, to become uh, members of uh, various boards, committees, and even the city council. So I was really proud about that. And the second one that I that I'd like to mention is the uh, 2018 Leadership Trailblazer Award. Uh, now this is this is the first time in 2018 that this was ever given. I was a finalist and I was one of ten. And it was given by the uh, League of Women in Government. And it means so much to me because uh, this nomination came from my colleagues. And uh, to, to know that uh, managers, male and female, uh, are members of this uh, organization, uh, selected the 10 of us. And it made me just so proud to know that, uh, that I was the first, one of the first, uh, to be selected. So again, these two, one, because it came from a community and nonprofit organization, and then the second is because it came from, from my peers. So that's a little, bit about, a little bit about me. And again, thank you so much for, for <coughs> inviting me. It, it is a privilege to be here with you this evening. OK, and again, I'm Mayor Mike Higgins. And uh, my, first, my first question will be, uh, what experience do you have with recycling programs, and how would you increase uh, uh, residents' recycling in Lincoln Park? OK, so recycling. Uh, I have a lot of experience working in that arena. Uh, one of the key things, uh, when, I, when I worked as the city manager in, uh, in Berkeley, uh, the city was, uh, was a part of a regional uh, 
waste collection recycling uh, organization called SACRA, the Southeast Oakland County Resource Recovery Authority. And in this uh, entity, uh, I believe it was uh, 12, maybe 11 cities that joined together to be able to provide not just uh, solid waste collection services to, to the entire communities, but also for recycling. And, uh, and the good thing about our recycling was we also provided educational programs to our residents to help them understand the importance of recycling. Uh, we also uh, did videos, uh, did flyers, made sure that we informed the, the, again, our residents. We have a very, very good, and I say we, when I still feel like I work there no matter what. Uh, of all the cities, I, I'm still a part of that. So, but anyways, in, in Berkeley, uh, we worked very hard to make sure that recycling was top, and, and we had an excellent uh, a, a manager, and uh, all the cities worked together with him. And I'm also proud to say that I chaired uh, that organization as well. And it was it was during probably one of the toughest times uh, when I when we when I chaired that organization. Uh, at that time, uh, many <coughs> of the cities were considering. Um, no longer being members of that. So we had to really sit down and decide whether or not that organization was still doing its job. So as, as far as recycling, as I said, I've been the chair of SACRA, which is uh, very, very much involved with recycling services to its community. And actually, uh, when we put all the numbers together from all the different cities, we make up a total of a, a population of over 100,000. And so it, it's, it's quite a big entity when it comes to solid waste and, and recycling. So again, uh, then also uh, when I first came to Michigan uh, in, in the village of Holly, uh, I set up the first recycling program for the, uh, for the village of, of Holly. And at that time, uh, there weren't a lot of companies that were doing recycling. And so we, uh, we, would, give, we would provide different types of, uh, of uh, carriers so that people can, you know, uh, <coughs> separate their, uh, their recycling, and that, that got to be a little hectic. So now uh, I know this, the village does a, a little bit better job and everything's all put together and then we can, we can separate. So, uh, and then also uh, for the, uh, the city of, of Pontiac, when it came to recycling, actually, I'm sure some of you may know that uh, the city of Pontiac for many, many years now, I was not there at the beginning, I was there at the end. Uh, it was un it went under receivership. And so, um, as part of the emergency manager's decision, he, uh, he uh, eliminated the, uh, the uh, way the city uh, handled its uh, waste, uh, solid waste collection and recycling. And as a matter of fact, he got rid <coughs> of the recycling services. And so many, many years, uh, the city did not have any recycling services. And it's still a little difficult. I did a survey, I did a citywide survey asking residents, you know, what are your thoughts of recycling? And, what are, uh, what are your biggest concerns? I think for, from what I understand, from, recall from the survey back then, they were concerned about the cost. They wanted to make sure that it was a reasonable expense. And then the second thing they wanted to do is to make sure that, that, uh, that the uh, recyclables that they collected were, uh, were reasonable, that they, you know, they were easy to collect. So I, I have a good background on that as well. And how am I gonna get the residents to, uh, to encourage them? Again, you know, through education, I think it's, it's going to be key. Educating people, understanding the importance of recycling. I come from the state of Texas where we don't recycle. And it just, you know, it, it took me a while to understand that importance. And, and now today when we understand uh, the, uh, the care of, of our overall in, you know, national uh, environment, uh, it, recycling is important. It, it's important, but but like everything, it has its you know, it has its ups and downs, its limits, and and so forth and so on. But I do believe that we can encourage people by educating them, helping them to understand, getting them involved, working with the schools, all kinds of things. Okay, and the next up will be the city clerk. So, if you are appointed the city manager, what's your plan for the first say 180 days? The first thing, uh, make sure that I understand the rules. All of the rules. That's going to be my number one. Uh, even even more so than before, really getting out there to, to meet all the, the, the key individuals. Uh, but the first thing would be to understand the rules, and by that I mean um, understanding the city charter, uh, the city ordinances, the city's policies when it comes to HR, purchasing. Purchasing is so important. You know, we we. Uh, I've had this issue with many of the cities understanding how purchasing works. Uh, many department heads or uh, 
don't understand uh, how contracting works, things of that nature. So understanding the, the rules and regulations of the city is going to be my number one when I first walk in. And then, of course, uh, the second would be to under learning uh, where uh, each of the, the directors are at in terms of the various projects that they're, that they're working on, uh, making sure that they're in, being implemented. And the one other thing that, that, I, that I'd like to mention, and that is your strategic plan. I have it here in front of me. Uh, I'd like to know where I'm going uh, as a city manager. I don't like to, you know, just to lead and not know that there's a, there's, there's a place to go. And especially, uh, I'm very impressed with, uh, with the strategic plan that you all put together. I think it's very uh, clear. It's very direct. Uh, I, the only thing that I would like to see, and maybe, maybe I'd, I need to do a little bit more research, is priorities. You know, what are the, what are the big issues that you want to make sure that I'm handling? Because these next, uh, or the first 100, 100 days, as you say, uh, you, you know, you're going to want to measure, you know, what am I doing? And how am I making sure that I'm, I'm implementing the key things that the city council wants? Because as a city manager, that's really what I do. I work with the city council to make sure that I uh, implement your, your policies, that I implement the projects that you want to get done. And that's how I see the strategic plan. So that'll be sitting right by my side to make sure I get it done. Councilman Dupre. Um, what challenges do you see the city facing? Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, That—that's—it's uh, not a tough question, uh, Council, uh, Councilman Dupre. But it's a difficult question in that, uh, like all cities right now, uh, you're going to be facing uh, issues that relate to the infrastructure. I think that's that's the biggest one that I see. You know, many cities, unfortunately, you know, we didn't have, we don't have the funds in order to be able to maintain our infrastructure as well as we, we would have liked to. Uh, and, I, and I will tell you that it's not just us here in Michigan. It's all over. And, and, and I've worked in Texas. I've worked in, 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 in Colorado. And they have the same issues. So making sure that our infrastructure is up, is up to par is going to be key. Uh, the other thing, and I, maybe it, it's going to you know, work side by side, and that's our, our, our finances making sure that uh, our, our books are, are uh, in the black, as they say. Uh, I did read your audit. As a matter of fact, those are two documents that I want to get to know a lot better. And the first two that I read, one was the budget, obviously, which is so important. And then the second is the audit. I did watch your council meeting, and uh, the last one in December. And I heard your report, which you did receive a clean um, audit, and that's very good. So congratulations to, to you and your staff for doing <coughs> a great job. On that, that's that's a good thing, and uh, and knowing that you do have a, a good fund balance, uh, I'll never forget uh, when I first uh, started working for for the uh, the city of uh, maybe I shouldn't mention names. <laughs> this is uh, it's okay. Uh, I worked in Berkeley, and we had a fund balance uh, starting of about fifty five thousand, and everything was was falling. Um, but little by little, we worked together <coughs> with the staff and the city council. And within three to five years, we were able to bring the fund balance up to in the, in the millions. And so obviously, it, it, it helped. But um, so that, that'll, be, that'll be the, the, first, the, the things that are, that are of concern to me. The budget, obviously, our infrastructure, and keeping up with, uh, with new technologies that are, coming, that are coming. Those are the, the three big things. Next up, Councilman Dupre. I mean, I'm sorry, Councilman du no, Tobin. <laughs> Do you have experience bringing uh, contracted services in-house? And what was the situation, and were you able to recognize cost savings? <laughs> okay. I worked with the, uh, with the city of Pontiac, the emergency manager, just to give you an idea of how, how much experience I have working with, with contracts. Uh, the entire city was contracted. Every single service that we had, uh, building, public works, police, fire, uh, very, very few exceptions uh, to not working with contracts. Uh, of course, um, that's for operations. Okay, that's for operations. When the emergency manager uh, took over the city of, of Pontiac, uh, he contracted everything. He got rid of everything. And uh, our parks, uh, we had a contracted uh, to just uh, mow the lawns. Uh, that's, that's really about it. Uh, we, we did not have a parks uh, director. The uh, 
So did we see any savings? Um, well, they were able to obviously um, get out of their financial situation, but uh, but that's not the way uh, that's not the way that I would have done it. Uh, it was it is and it was very difficult to to come up you know from that uh, the, the great city of Pontiac uh, used to be a city of, of over 800 employees when I got there it was less than maybe 30 employees everything was contracted so just to give you an idea yes I have a lot of experience and you have to uh, do pros and cons when you're looking at uh, at, uh, at solid ways I mean um, at contracting services, and the reason Solid Waste came to my mind because that's that's the one uh, project that I was working in with in the uh, the city of Lansing. We were looking at that, and we were looking at contracting. Right now, the uh, the city of Lansing is probably one of the very few cities that still provides uh, solid waste solid waste and recycling services directly to its residents. But at the same time, believe it or not, uh, the residents there can still contract for their own uh, solid waste and recycling services if they want to. Okay, and this was um, bringing it back in-house from contracted yeah um, no it's in 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 Burke uh, in in, um, in in Pontiac everything was contracted uh, we saw obviously we saw some savings but was that good it depends on 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 the on the service the services that I brought back uh, the first one was uh, code enforcement uh, we did we, we did slowly but surely bring it back in uh, it was it was contracted. Sometimes some of the services, uh, it's not just a matter of money; it's a matter of quality when you're dealing with that. So you've got to evaluate each service as is. I know many people uh, would like to see uh, other services as well, uh, but again, it, it's just a matter of quality, and that's that was for the city of Pontiac. And just to be clear, and then uh, in uh, in Lansing, well, it's in house right now, and. Uh, Right now, we had uh, we have some issues, some financial uh, issues that we'd like to see improved, and that was one that we were looking at to perhaps consider. And uh, it hasn't been decided; nothing's been done. Uh, yeah. But uh, but that was one that we were looking at. Thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Councilman Ross. Tell us about your experience in preparing and managing budgets. What do you think are the keys to successfully managing a budget in the public sector? Thank you for that question. I love budgeting. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think that's that's my plus in, in terms of uh, when I first uh, started my career in in the field of uh, public administration. Uh, it wasn't my first job uh, working with the city of San Antonio, but it was the last job that I worked in San Antonio. I, obviously, I wanted to be a city manager. I worked in the budget office for the city of San Antonio, and I was responsible for some of the. You know, back then when you're there. It, it's just your hometown, and uh, and you don't see it as a big thing, and it really isn't when you talk to the folks that are there. So um, I'm proud to say that I've I have prepared and developed uh, budgets for each of the cities that I've worked in, uh, starting from the very beginning to the very end, in developing their presentations and developing the report itself. I'm very proud of the fact that each of the cities that I've worked in, in preparing their budgets, they've received the, uh, I call it prestigious because I think it's important. Uh, not only have we been able to uh, receive the um, GFOA's Budget Presentation Award, uh, but also the CAFR, which is also very important. And that's something that, that I was able to achieve in the, in the city of Pontiac, where we did receive the CAFR. And that's a very important document for all cities, and it, sh it shows a lot of transparency and that there's a lot of work that goes into, uh, into a community. So uh, the other thing, and, and here in Michigan, it's not done. We're, we're a state of small cities, and uh, we don't have the luxuries of having all these, these budget staffs and things of that nature like in San Antonio although I will tell you that it, it was just a small staff of maybe 10 people maybe a little bit more preparing this billion dollar budget <laughs> uh, but uh, but I also have experience in the preparation of uh, of um, and I just lost it right now uh, forecast by doing financial forecasts and that's something that we did uh, I also worked on with the city of San Antonio where we we would look ahead in, in terms of what uh, what could potentially happen 
in our, in, uh, as it relates to our finances. And uh, not only did we look at, obviously, increases in costs and things like that, but we also look at, looked at uh, legislative issues. That was very important. We looked at potential grants that could come up, things of that nature. So we looked 20 years ahead. Uh, many of the mayors that uh, we worked in San Antonio, uh, they, they, they liked the visionary and uh, they liked to think ahead. And, uh, and that was, the, I guess, the first city that I worked in where we actually put together a, uh, a, f a financial forecast for the city. Back then, I think it was, I want to say we looked 20 years ahead. I'd like to bring it down and say 10 years because that's probably more realistic and more, more attainable. As you go further than 10, then it's just a, it's just a guess. You know, <laughs> so uh, you may as well just you know flip a coin. But um, but anyways, uh, I have a strong background in in, in preparing budgets, and uh, and I'm hoping that uh, I can work with y'all. Okay. Okay. Jason Bear. Hi. Th this position requires you to respond to ma many requests in a short period of time. How do you ensure promptness, accuracy, and courtesy under these conditions? Okay, um, that's an issue that all cities have. You know, we, uh, our residents, uh, council members, uh, other officials, you know, they, they want information and they'd like it as quickly as possible. And obviously, you know, we have some limitations with staff. So, um, again, depending on the cities, one, one, of, the, one of the ways uh, that I've learned, and I know the city of Lansing and the city of, of Grand Rapids does this, is they have what they call a, a 311 number. Have you all heard of that? So you call 311, um, make sure it's 311. Uh, you, uh, you call this number up and you can ask any question you want for the entire city, anything that you want, anything that's happening, anything about a, 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 an issue, uh, if it relates to animal control, if it relates to budget, anything that you want, you call this number and you will get an answer almost immediately. Uh, that is tremendous. Uh, obviously, that's done in, in some of the bigger cities. Um, but for me, the, in working in small cities, the, the way that I do is obviously is I prioritize. And so I work with the staff. My, my biggest directive to them would be, or one of my biggest directives to them was make sure that you reply to our residents and to our city council. Make them your top priority whenever we get some key questions and get them the, uh, the answers as quickly as possible. And if you're not, you know, if it's going to take a little while, then uh, let them know. Let them know. And, and uh, I know some of them will understand and others won't, no matter what. But, uh, but let them know that you're working on it and make it one of your priorities. Okay. Councilman Zor. When you become a city manager, how do you go about getting to know the community and uh, building relationships with the stakeholders in that community? Oh, yeah, that's so important. Uh, I think in all of the cities that I've worked in, that's something that I strive, and that's to get to know the, the residents and the business people that, that work here in the city. Uh, I do that by attending uh, meetings of the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce or other, other committees. Uh, I like to attend uh, uh, festivals. I encourage the, uh, the staff and especially our executive directors to go to these functions. Uh, you know, I, I know in, uh, in, uh, in Brighton, Brighton, Colorado, uh, we had uh, uh, evening uh, movies outside and I would sit out there with the residents and watched uh, you know some family movie and you, you know you bring a, a, a picnic lunch or dinner or whatever and enjoy that so I, I like to do that so you'll see me uh, do a lot of that I'd like to get to, to know everybody and to, and to meet I also like to attend I can't believe I'm saying this because this was not me when I first came here I'll be honest uh, and that's to meet with all of the various uh, committees and organizations that the city has at least at least once um, I, I know that, uh, and more as needed, but I want them to know that as their city manager, I'm here for them and I'm going to listen. We have a lot. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> That's, I, like I said, I, I can't believe I, I'm saying this because I, I will tell you, and I, I think I've, I've mentioned this before, uh, managers in different states have different, uh, different styles or different roles. In, in Texas, as they say, uh, city managers are very powerful and so they really have very little contact with with the uh, with the public sorry guys don't get mad <laughs> <laughs> but when I came to Michigan it was a big shock to me to uh, to meet with the uh, cemetery commission 
to meet with a Parks and Recreation Committee. Oh Lord, uh, you know it, uh, it. It was it was some it was something else. It was something that they. I'll tell you when I go back and I meet with my with my colleagues from from Texas. Uh, I, I tell them you know it's. Uh, I wish you'd go back and, and, and meet with your committees and listen to them. Of course, it's very difficult in working with San Antonio. I mean, the, the uh, our budget hearings, uh, budget director, finance director, whenever we had our public hearings for, for our budget, we, we had to go to the convention center. <laughs> That's how big the meetings were. And we stayed there for several days and to listen to them. So it's a little different. Um, but uh, uh, anyways, uh, I would recommend that they that they would do that. Uh, in, in Colorado, uh, again, they're different, and uh, and most managers don't attend. But I'll tell you that I took my my Michigan uh, my Michigan attitude, and the committees were so surprised when I would show up to their meetings. And you know, hey, I'm your city manager. I'm here to listen to you. Let's let's you know let's work together. Let's talk about some of the issues that that you're you know you have some concerns. And so it worked well. It worked. Thank well. you. Mm -hmm. Can you? Um, Tell me about your personality and how it how it what qualifies you and help you as a, as a public leader and a servant. My personality, I, I think I'm um, well. I'm hope it, it takes you know it takes time to get here <laughs> to become uh, to become a city manager. I mean, nobody really knows uh, even at school. Uh, but I've always been uh, you know when I when I when I watched uh, the, the the individuals who who were my mentors. To, to become a city manager, uh, I'm not like them at all. <laughs> uh, you know, I had I, I I had the privilege, and I mean this sincerely. I, I had the privilege of learning from um, the manager, not just the manager of San Antonio. And again, this is my Texas days, all right. Uh, the manager from Dallas, the manager from Austin. Uh, you know, the, the top managers, and they were all very standoffish. And uh, I think I learned how not. <laughs> so I'm very open. I'm uh, I'm very uh, well. I'm very willing to listen to to what they say, and uh, and when I mean listen, I mean I'm not just saying you know sit there and listen to you talk. Really do something, if if at all possible, with with the concerns that that you bring, and uh, and show them that that I that I'm really listening, and if at all possible, if we can implement or help them to help me to understand the concern, then. I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Um, How would you prioritize um, the activities of the city staff? Mm, like I said, uh, my priority would be based on the uh, number one, the strategic plan the city council has set forth. So that's going to be number one to make sure that they are achieving and complying with that strategic plan, and that we're you know at least in line uh, with that. And then, of course, uh, uh, if there's an emergency of some sort, then obviously that's going to take precedent. So, you know, we've got to address that. It changes. You know, when, when you're working at, at, in, at, at, at this level or with the directors, it, it's, you have to be able to be flexible. It changes. It's not always, I'm going to do this, this, this. But the, the first priorities would be, again, listen to the, uh, to the, uh, the strategic plans, the, devel the various uh, uh, Objectives that the city council has given you, go there, finish that, and then and then obviously if things change, address them as they come. So that's basically what you do as a city manager. It it, it can change from from day to day. Okay, um, Tracy. Sorry. Um, <coughs> how would you attract and develop develop and retain talent? You know, in today's world, things are changing when it comes to personnel. Uh, and obviously, you know, money is important. Uh, that's, 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 that's key, but it's not always key. Uh, you know, especially when you're looking at, at uh, working for, for government, whether it's, it's at, the, at the county, at the state, at the national, uh, you know, even at the local, it's not always about money. Uh, I know that when I uh, chose uh, to be in this profession, it, it really wasn't about dollars. When uh, when I accepted the uh, position of, of deputy mayor for the city of Pontiac, I actually uh, I lost my salary was reduced, but it was something that I wanted to do. It was a it was a bigger community. I was dealing with some mega changes, 
So the way that I would retain uh, current staff is is to provide not just if, if at all possible depending on the city's financial situation you know make sure that we are at least you know meeting the uh, the market level or at least have some plan to get there you know don't just uh, tell them well we're gonna get there we're gonna get there and look at this budget you got to you know because you're, you're gonna lose them that's that's gonna be key but at the same time create a um, a positive environment working environment that you know, you, you're gonna you're gonna be glad to, to come to work. You know, I think one of the one of the best comments I ever received when I worked in uh, in, in the city of Berkeley is you know, the residents would come in and they'd say, you know, it's kind of nice to see people smiling and laughing and you know talking. And I think that that many times uh, that helps. You know, to show our our uh, employees our appreciation for the work, which is which is so important. You know. Uh, the pat in the back sometimes goes a, a long, long way. You know, know, knowing that that's that's key, uh, providing them with the with the necessary resources that the resources that they need in order so that they can continue to grow. You know, because when when you get in, the, in 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 any department, whatever, uh, it it's so good to be able to know that that you're aware of of all the latest and greatest things. You might not be able to do it all, but you're you know you've got the training, and and you know how to do it. And uh, and when you have a, a a good you know happy staff, then I think that's that uh, that goes a long long way. And then of course the last resort, uh, and this is and I say this uh, uh, half-heartedly, I'll ask them. You know what? What do you need? What What will make you stay here? You know what? <coughs> what What will uh, uh, keep you here? And uh, and if you can, you know, then then you'll you'll do that. But of course, whatever whatever I do, it has to be something that will be uh, not specific for one person. For what I do for one goes for all. And of course, uh, if it has anything relating to 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 dollars or policy changes, then I come for approval to you all to make sure that that gets done. Councilman Tobin. <coughs> what are trends in local government that could impact Lincoln Park? <laughs> <coughs> oh my. Um, trends, 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 trends. Um, oh, th again, that's 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 one of those questions that um, uh, I don't know if it's a trend, but uh, I think we all know that we're not an island anymore. And that everything that happens uh, throughout the world will impact uh, this community, whether it's uh, out there in the Middle East uh, or out there uh, in China or Japan. Uh, you know the, that that all. I don't know if the, I don't know if I want to call that a trend, but but we're we're not an island, and and we need to understand that uh, we will be impacted. Uh, never in a million years. Uh, when I first decided to, you know, to to become a city manager, uh, did I did I know? And I and I can tell you, uh, I worked with Wayne State University in helping uh, put together their, their their curriculum for for city city administrators. Uh, never did I know that city managers uh, or administrators would have to be dealing with uh, things such as um, changes in the environment or a terrorist attack or uh, or a, or a pandemic. Uh, who knew? Nobody. We, it's just something that you know we weren't exactly trained to do. Uh, when I worked in in in, uh, in Laporte, Texas, uh, we call it the um, Hurricane Alley because that's where all the hurricanes. And I, I worked there for a little over three years, and I got to learn a lot about FEMA. And uh, and that's something that that if at all possible, I like to work. Uh, with the staff here in making sure that our emergency plans are, are up to speed and that all the directors are familiar with it. That's something that we are working uh, on in the city of Lansing. Uh, the emergency uh, operations plan is not just something that you would uh, use whenever you have any type of national national disaster of any sort, but it's also when, you, when you're dealing with, uh, uh, with just simple everyday uh, events. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, th unfortunately, our, our our community, you know, it's it's uh, it's subject to all kinds of things when you're dealing with uh, uh, with security for for a community and festivals and things like that. So, I, I hope I'm answering your questions. I know you're looking for trends, but I think uh, the the trends that 
that you know again as i said you know we're we're not alone <laughs> we're not an island we we will have to focus on that the other uh the other trend obviously is that or that i that i see is the uh looking at the uh the uh, technical portion that's coming up, uh, making sure that we uh, that we're prepared uh, for another emergency when it comes to our uh, um, IT type of uh, things. Uh, you know, we we need to be better prepared for that. We need to now work like that. You know, make sure that we are ready should it happen. And it it, it doesn't it does not necessarily have to be a pandemic. It can be an emergency of, of some sort. Now, the, the reason I like the emergency management, or emergency <coughs> management system, as they call it, uh, is that it is universal, and that it is, it is a language that everyone understands, and even the city council will be part of this, because you will be res you know, responsible to communicating with our residents to let them know uh, how this is going to work should an emergency occur. And, uh, and I think that's going to be so important where you'll be able to communicate, we'll all know and understand all the, uh, uh, how things are, are to manage and we'll be able to work together, not just within our, with our own community, but also with the outside community as well, because it is, it is a uniform system of, of management. And, uh, and I, I'll never forget when 9-11 uh, when came uh, and I was meeting with the, with the uh, other cities and we were all thinking, what do we, what do, we do next? What do we do next? And, and I said, you know, uh, I think we should look at it as a, as an, as a disa natural disaster and look at it in that fashion and then work uh, towards helping us recover. And then that's sort of similar when you work uh, through a natural disaster. I mean, I've, I've gone through hurricanes, I've gone through floods and things of that nature. Uh, and of course, uh, I, I don't think people first understood it when I introduced it. They thought, oh no, Jane, you're going the wrong way. But I think today, uh, no, people see it. And as a matter of fact, they're using it now. So we do follow FEMA, emergency operation rules. Thank you. Councilman Ross. How do you clearly convey your staff's recommendations and rationale to council? <coughs> okay. Um, so it depends. Um, how you're asking me that question? Okay, I mean, is it is it in a? Uh, will it be in a uh, a public venue, say a council meeting? So when we come before you, and we're giving you a recommendation for whatever project that we're working on, uh, it depends. Uh, for some cities, uh, the manager works with the director, prepares him or her to be able to answer questions that you may have for the public. So that's that's one. I've done that. I've also done it in uh, in another way where um, I've actually am responsible for, uh, except for the opening of the meeting, I have run the city council meeting, and uh, and I handle each uh, each item and I explain uh, what it's all about, how it's going to impact you, what are some of the costs that are that are going to uh, they're going to be required is it budgeted is it not budgeted is it an emergency um, well there we have to make a budget amendment of some sort so uh, so if we're looking at something like that that's how I would communicate with you but I will tell you and this is this is so important uh, and it's not a right or wrong type of thing but when it comes to communicating uh, a request from from the staff it's something that I will be working with them very closely to make sure that I understand what they're looking for so that when I uh, come before you, it is something that I'm very supportive of and uh, something that I, I think that is, it's doable. So it's not just a, 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 a something that I don't think about, but whenever I would come, if I have the privilege or ability to come before you, I would be very supportive, I would be very informed, and I would be working with the, uh, with the staff to make sure that I communicate uh, their, their request clearly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to ask you to give us uh, one, one last question of um, why you want to come to Lincoln Park, what, <laughs> what makes us special, and um, <coughs> what makes you the perfect fit. Oh, my. Okay. Let's see. I, I, d I did, believe it or not, I, I thought of that question. That thought you might ask me that one question, so let, let's make sure I got this straight. Okay, why am, I, why am I here? Why am I interested? 
<laughs> as you can see in my resume, my entire career has been dedicated to working with local government. And I'm interested in, in, in the role, in this role, because local governments, you make a difference. We make a difference in everyday lives. That's one of the primary reasons I, I, I chose to become a city manager. I know that may sound kind of kind of uh, wishy-washy or whatever, but that's really why, why, why I did this. Uh, you know, through local government, uh, we combine many disciplines. We combine engineering, public safety, economic development, planning, and so forth. And we bring them together to help find solutions to important uh, social, economic, and, and environmental issues. So uh, that's why I, I, I chose to come here uh, based on that. But, uh, but why here specifically? Uh, the best thing that I, can, that I can reply or answer to that question is that um, I believe that my skills, my education, are very much in line uh, with what you're looking in terms of the requirements of this position. I'm always interested in taking on some new challenges and to work with a, with a great team of, of, uh, of professionals who are interested in, in ensuring uh, the city's uh, continued progress. I think you have a great staff. Uh, and uh, I know, uh, like I said, I've watched, uh, I've watched some of your council meetings. And uh, they're hardworking people. And it's tough in, in today's world. It's very tough. So that's, that's why. Well, thank you for coming, and wish thank you good you, luck, and we'll uh, be letting you know. When we're <coughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I cannot, uh, before, before I leave, if, if, I, if I can say so, am I going to be given just a few minutes? Uh, well, okay, maybe not. I know we're, we're, we're going, you're tired. I can see it in your face. Oh, no, she's going to give a dissertation. I will, we I still will. got two more meetings to go. So. I, will, I will let go. I will let go. <laughs> I sincerely hope that, that, uh, that I'm considered favorably. Yeah. But I, if anything, uh, I would just like to thank, uh, thank your staff for all their help and for them being here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And then, of course, uh, your consultant, Amy Sell, who put us through a ring <laughs> <laughs> to come here. So, but they've been very good, excellent. And Kristen, it's a pleasure. It's the first time we get to meet. And, uh, and so I thank you. So thank you, City Council. Have a good evening. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks Thank for you. Coming. <clears throat>